Ready to get started? Yeah, let's get it. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Justin Gonzalez, owner and driver for Marauders Dodge F1 racing team. Uh, we really do believe we have a team in place, a second driver in place, in a car that's going to compete right out of the gate with Aston Martin, McLaren, and really challenge the middle of the field at the beginning of the season, but come the end of the season, we plan on that. We really do plan on attacking Red Bull, Mercedes, and Ferrari. With our core set of partners now that came on, uh, they really set us up for success with uh, providing us the resources we need to set up a compound and an HQ that was top of the line. Yeah, I had one person in mind that I wanted to be the second, the second driver of this team. Uh, we don't have a one or two driver. Uh, we have uh, a one and one. We have two guys that are going to compete every week for that number one spot, for that pole position, and then obviously going into the Grand Prix each weekend. Uh, two guys that can really go out there and put up their best shot to win races. This person uh, that we had in mind uh, has a lot of experience. Um, a former champion as well as someone that can provide a lot of insight to building the car and making it what it needs to be to compete with the best of the best. And that person was Jensen Button. We know Jensen has been retired and to get back in it, it's going to take a little bit of time, but he's been working very hard and putting himself in great position uh, to be ready for Bahrain. We really built this car to compete in the first three races. Okay. Uh, Bahrain, obviously, going to Australia, and uh, as well as Jeddah. Uh, we the, these three races, we're, we're really building the car to get off to a hot start here, and obviously adapt the car uh, as we move along to these different sets of uh, of tracks. But primarily, right now, we believe we have something that's going to be a rocket ship out there and really compete from the beginning. When it came to revealing the car and the team, the one thing that we kept looking at, and there's four words that came in and uh, really put a stamp on the look, the team, and now we've kind of adopted. Now we've pretty much adopted now as a philosophy. Relentless precision, dominant speed. <laughs> Going into ball rain, our, our testing was really good from the get go. Uh, the first, the, you know, the first set of practices we did a really, really good job on. Uh, we believe we were really fast with uh, all three sets of tires, um, but we had some trouble. We get to qualifying. Once we got to qualifying, we did a great job in the first couple of sessions. Getting to the last section, uh, that's when. Uh, we had some issues. We got our first issue. And that issue was uh, Checo Perez. Uh, I was on the track. And in Sector 1 and sec Sector 2, uh, we set the fastest time. Um, I don't know if it was by accident or if Perez, I haven't looked at the, the tape, but if Perez checked up or what happened, but uh, coming out of sector two, uh, setting the fastest two sectors, uh, Checo checked up in front of us. We were actually passing an Aston Martin uh, because we were really quick and it looks like we were gonna take the pole position, but it, Checo backed up enough uh, during that run to almost cause a wreck between all three of the cars. Luckily, I was able to pull out. I uh, had some damage with the car that we are currently addressing, but I uh, don't know what he was doing there. Really don't. We got off to a great start, but the one thing, <laughs> the one thing I didn't notice from the beginning was that. Um, 
pit lane or the pit wall could radio could talk to me but I didn't know I could I could not radio back to the pit wall and usually I don't really have a lot to say um, there's only so many adjustments that you can make in uh, in the car um, to make it work so nine times out of ten uh, whatever whatever you got is what you got and there's not much changes you can make outside of a couple of things on, on, on the steering wheel but um, I didn't radio back to the pit wall um, and I usually don't radio back to the pit wall that much and what I didn't know is that they couldn't hear me our comms uh, my comms going to them um, were not working 